Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Pillars of Eternity with me, Bring It On. I loaded in, and it looks like Aloth is trying to speak to Sigani, so let's listen. For five years. I've had Ijimok. But you can't talk to him. My standards changed around year two. Alright, let's go in. See if we can't find the source of Rowena's voice for Dalton. Sure. Viscous, foul-smelling sludge ebbs in the trench. Fantastic. Light, flame, and sound. We'll keep to ourselves. As you approach the dead man, you can feel the faint traces of his soul lingering, a stunned uncertainty holding it in place. When you near, without warning, the soul hurries toward you, as though you were a solitary light in the dank gloom of this place, come to usher it away. Its essence invades your consciousness. You're in a different body now, walking deeper into the catacombs, clothed in a dark robe with a mask pulled over your face. You're following a familiar path along the canal, heading to a room built around a statue of a figure wearing a robe much like yours. Others await, clothed in hoods and shadows. Ahead is another figure dressed like you, traveling in the same direction. You don't know his name, and that's how it's supposed to be. Out of the darkness, something monstrous grabs the other figure. You turn to flee find yourself face to face with a troll. The panic pounding through your brain is interrupted by razor-edged teeth and claws. You snap yourself out of the dead man's memory. The corpse lies on the damp and grimy ground. His hooded mask are missing, his clothes are shredded. Tsugane draws up next to you. You alright? Looked almost like you'd lost your footing for a minute. It happens from time to time. She watches you quietly. You really are a watcher, aren't you? Uh, once in a great many generations, one of my people was born with the ability to speak to souls. Usually, such individuals become elders, or a lone set of tracks in the snow. She cocks her head. But I thought my journey would be easier if I could see what you see. But looking at you, I'm not so sure. Neither am I. Believe it or not, I once would have rejoiced to know I'd be picked to travel far in search of something great. But even, in, even these gifts come with a cost, don't they? Forgive me if I was a little skeptical of your abilities before. I can't say I've met a real Watcher before. Oh, don't worry about him. He just likes doing that from time to time. Seems to cheer him up, so I just let him. <laughs> once you've seen it a few times, the shock wears off. Every time he goes a little strange in the face, I try and see if I can hear anything. Connor grins. Hasn't worked so far. See if you can get him to tell you what the spirit said. Oh yeah, have we spoken huh? to Durance in a while? Or did we burn through all this dialogue? If doubts and curiosity plague you. Huh. Huh. I suspect the app. Here we go. Uh, tell me more about Ashfall. Did we read this? It doesn't matter. Uh, Durance raises an eyebrow and snorts. The amount you ask, you think you miss it more than I. Uh, what are the etchings on the staff? Tales. Reminders. Something to think upon. Devotions I can wrap my mind around when chanting words becomes tiresome. Chants lose their strength, but carving symbols into the wood with one's finger, blessed by fire. He grunts. Ernst takes his finger. You watch it trace one of the paths along the wood. The symbol glows slightly. Red embers form a fire. From or form a fire? he draws his hand away, it still glows, and he stares at it, letting it reflect in his eyes. I find symbols are a greater source of devotion than words. Texts. If there were many texts to be had. Texts remind me of a deer, the perfume of aristocracy. He grunts, wrinkles his nose. Eloth yawns. Only he tired of the spoken word so quickly. Durance does not appear to notice. The war of black trees and this staff I carry 
are the only hymns and devotions I need. And it's a symbol, one that the faithful and faithless alike understand. He strains his back and sighs. His hand cradles the staff again. Ashfall's stockpile of guns, explosives, and alchemical fire sounds dangerous. Life is dangerous. You know more than most. Terence grunts. Flame is always hungry. If you don't respect it, its kisses will fire your loins like a defiant bay copper corner whore. Durrance closes his eyes for a moment, as if thinking back. Some chambers were consumed, some destroyed, but Ashfall remains. It'll be good to see it one day, if I return. He shrugs. I doubt I shall. Why's that? Durrance's eyes open, and he glares at you. Because home is a mess of disappointments, that's why. Never make a place your home, Watcher. That's my advice to you. Keep to the road. A home is a curse. It'll kill you to stay. And the moment your foot exits its door, it'll never again measure up to the cathedral in your head. Durrance grunts, his hand tightening on his staff. You notice Adair has been listening. He speaks under his breath. Don't know if the problem is so much a cathedral in his head as bats in his bell tower. Sure, I'm sad, though that I missed the party they must have thrown, as soon as he'd left. Now that's a disappointment. Is that why you wander? I expect you to understand, Watcher. You don't seem to value whatever home you're from I Excuse me, either. You're likely a stronger person for it. So you ask the why of it, Watcher. The why that one doesn't need a cathedral to uphold the faith, remind one of it. I don't hate it. I don't despise it. I'm not some weeping cast out fool. I wander because my faith, because of my faith, and to spread it. He grunts. I have many tens of years to go, before Durrance's trials let me go. I'll never get there while I'm bantering words with you. But then who's more the fool? The fool who asks, or the one who answers? He snorts. I tire of your wordplay. Let's do something. Can you tell me what some of the symbols in your staff mean? Durrance glances at you at irritation. He seems about to snap at you, then stops, frowns. He glances at the staff, then turns it in his hands. As he does, there's a hint of embers, symbols glowing on its surface. You still see them. Not all can. But then again, few have a watcher's gift of sight. His tone is more level, more curious, but there's a challenge in it. He raises an eyebrow. Why are those symbols carved on your staff? Carved? This staff is a history. Acts leave their mark. Some symbols fall into the ash. Others blaze brighter. Durin scoffs, and his voice settles with an almost proud strength. What causes one to fade, and another to rise? Memory. Meaning. It's same as the memories in your head, perhaps more trustworthy. Random acts, things done with instinct. They may make lines burning briefly through the wood. Acts devised, planned, that stay with you. Symbols form and tell the story. He snorts, seemingly at himself. It's like all memories, except the staff burns it true. When a thought's close, you see it clearer brighter. Once you forget, they get buried. But like rings in wood, the etchings remain. Keeps me grounded. Also, it's a solid walking stick. He grunts. His face relaxes into a grin. How is it only watchers can see the symbols? They're energies of the spirit, a channel for one's faith. He frowns. It's hard to say. There's a time when they glowed brighter. But now, they're an aid in my work. Because the staff's markings stand out to a watcher. Well, they sometimes identify themselves. He frowns. And sometimes, they blind to the staff as well. A gift of Magrin, perhaps. To cloak itself from sight when one isn't looking for it. I don't see Magrin's symbol on your staff. Terence frowns. It is there, but marked different. I follow Durrance, and in his teachings, there is but a single flame, a simpler aspect. His frown deepens, he taps the edge of the staff. 
Parents would meditate by focusing on a single flame and attach meaning to it. It was something to center the spirit for, was, for what was to come. For what was to come. Flame is intended to symbolize bringing punishment to another, and is inscribed above the symbol of the one being punished, marking them as always touched by Magrin. Huh. I suspect the answers will seed more questions. Well, let's ask about Magrin again. Alright, so we can't talk to him anymore. You have Wiles' eyes painted on your skin. There's more mysteries than questions. Even a match, or sorry, marching force of answers won't place at you. Even soldiers need to let their thoughts si settle, just as their priests do. Uh. Alright, very well. Let's continue. Shh. Steady does it. Ready, Watcher. Be discreet. Lay in low. All right. More icky sticky oozes. Shouldn't be too difficult. Hundred percent a hidden door, right? I right, guess not. Uh, let's not go up the stairs yet. Explore both sides of the canal first. Light, flame, and sound. So we're going to avoid any stairs for now. Explore the floor that we're on. Nice and slow. And what does the flame reveal? This keeps going, doesn't it? 
Sure. All right, same description as the other side. Nice and slow. Brave out. I'll see what I can find. This one's been ripped open. But that bodes well for our little party. and quiet. Alright, let's gonna go up the stairs. So what do we have here? Alright, so the Fen Walkers. A plus 20 defense against stuck, paralyzed, hobbled attacks. Minus 3 seconds stuck, paralyzed, and hobbled. Uh, these comfortable, close-fitting boots are ideal for traversing difficult terrain. Modeled after the footwear of the Fisher Crane tribe of Thane Bog. Yeah, Thane, it's not Thine. Uh, these boots are commonly manufactured in Adsdom and Bale Reach for travel through the marshes. As the roads from the Valian Republics have become more and more important for trade and travel, these boots have grown in popularity and style. Alright, my characters have boots, so congratulations. Now you do. Appearance. What a shame. Yeah. I shall be discreet. Yeah. I'll see what I can find. Being in the catacombs, I did expect more undead. I'm sure we still have plenty of time. We'll eventually run across them, right? Alright, so some fine male armor. How's it compare? A little better. I really like a second chance. So I might keep this and just enchant it as we go. A 
costs money. Okay. Hold off on that for this very second, but we'll probably end up doing that. This looks so much better. That, that's okay. Um, his unique armor. Better recovery speed. She shouldn't be taking hits anyway, so we'll probably just sell this. Mm. Also, while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and take. Oh, that's fine. Hmm. I shall be quiet as a calm sea, which is not very. a quick save since I haven't done that at all this episode. <laughs> I'm on the trail. Hmm. Oh, way down. Let's have a water go. Right. Happens to be our main quest objective. All right, let's force them back here to us. few more here than I thought. Uh, he has this. Alright, it's a pretty big fight. Uh, let's throw out some buffs. Yeah, the wizard, all the wizards. Sure. All right, not too bad. <laughs> I should have expected the swarm. I mean, just look at the architecture. I mean, they could be <laughs> climbing out of the walls. Just waltzing in here. Shall be discreet. I'm on the trail. I'll take a look. Oh, 
Oh, must miss that. They know. Okay, uh, let's be a little bit more careful going forward. <laughs> hmm. Back to rest may not be out of the cards right now. Terrence is in bad shape. Sure. I right, so I can involved with them quite yet. So it is coming to a close. I want to start a conversation in a potential boss fight. That might look around to the I think I learned my lesson on the other side. I thought I had a little bit more time before traps started appearing. I was going to start sneaking around this corner. Which also would have been too late. So. does it. So much for my due diligence. Yeah, this loops around to the same spot. So we're not going to go here yet. Uh oh. Do I have anything that boosts mechanics? Lore. Pretty sure all these buffs are combat focused. Yeah, I don't see anything helpful. Yeah. All right, let's go around this way then. Nice and slow. All right, uh, then I'm just gonna call the episode here. And the next one we'll speak to, was it Halig of Thane? Or we'll speak to him now? <laughs> A lone figure in tattered robes shuffles across the chamber. Muttering under its breath. As you approach, the figure halts and swivels its head toward you. Its haggard visage is a labyrinth of wrinkles and sores overgrown by a moss-like beard. What's this? Who disturbs Helig's work? Its voice rattles and gurgles like that of a drowning man. You're Helig. Don't send me to look for Rowena. He leans back and bursts into raucous laughter. His threadbare robes drift apart, revealing an amulet and a ragged wound running from chest to throat. It spatters a black, viscous liquid on the floor with every cackle. That old fool is still alive. I hope he still doesn't bear a grudge for that incident. It was so very long ago. Oh, he's the necromancer. Dalton believes that Rowena is in the catacombs. He seems to restrain another bout of chuckling. Oh, you could say that. We retrieve my grimoire from Modred. I'll let you in on the secret. All right. What do you need me to do? When Animancy started gaining popularity, 
I came to Defiance Bay in hopes of finding a place where my research would meet with more acceptance. I worked at the Brackenbury Sanitarium for a few months when I met Modred. He spits a glob of black blood on the floor. Let's just say Modred and I didn't see eye to eye. It got so bad, we are threatening to kill each other on a daily basis. Obviously, that bastard made good on his threat. He runs a jagged fingernail along his oozing wound. I took a dagger into my chest while I was sleeping, and dumped my body in the catacombs. You're standing here now. I preserved my mind and my memories with anguith and magic, and a few timely preparations. He looks at his rotting hands. Yet now my soul is anchored into this decaying husk. His claw-like hands clench into fists. Mojit stole a life from me and left me with this wretched or sorry, this wrecked corpse. And this craving. He clutches at his stomach and glances at you hungrily, but only for a second. Mojo keeps all that is precious to him in a trunk in his laboratory, just as he stole my grimoire. He offers you a key with a claw-like hand. On your way to Brackenbury Sanitarium, then. Bring my grimoire and my revenge, and you can have your Rowena. He chokes on a burbling chuckle. If there's nothing else, be on your way. What are you doing down here? Research. Hodgepodge of animancy and necromancy. I have peace and quiet as well as an abundant supply of subjects. What are those creatures behind you? Just a few of my personal projects. Sorry souls stuck in their mortal shells. Their flesh is as dead as mine, though their minds are not as well maintained. They flock to me like worms to drakes. They're not half as intelligent, but he watches as one stumbles into a desk. They serve for amusement. Farewell. Yeah. Okay, it's not the turn I expected it to take, but we may as well take a look around in here. A grim assortment of rusty blades adorns this table. I'll take a look. The scattered feverish notes detail various animantic procedures and rites of necromancy. Tarnish locket. The silver locket is dented and tarnished. A faded portrait of a young nobleman still rests inside. His face has been worn away by time. Dust and cobwebs have been swept aside for various alchemical implements. Though coated with rust and grit, they look recently used. I said Lockheed was not a quest I'm on the trail. I it was. Okay, we've got another quest. Um, oh. I have to remember that I'm a, a greedy paladin here. I'm not a paladin that cares about undead or evil. This game may not be evil. I mean, he definitely seems it. He has all the telltale signs of being an evil person, but we'll, we'll see. We'll let the quest play out first and see if he betrays us. As I expect him to do. Alright, I'm going to call the episode here, and the next one we'll continue exploring the catacombs, and I don't know if I want to go to the Temple Wodoka yet. We might, but we'll see. Either way, for now, thanks for watching, I hope to see you guys in the next one.